Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about how four-wire smoke detectors work and how we use a power supervision relay to make sure that neither the power nor the zone circuit gets cut or gets, you know, whatever, a wire doesn't come off. Um, the power supervision relay basically supervises both, well, it supervises the power circuit, but it uses the zone circuit to do it. Um, and in the, in the first smoke detector video where I described how two wire smoke detectors are wired up. Um, I mentioned that the reason that they even make four wire smoke detectors is because sometimes you need to know every smoke detector on a circuit that's an alarm. And I don't know that I did a great job of explaining why that is or, or, or how you would know because if you get an alarm on zone one you're not going to really know if you have one alarm on zone one or ten alarms on zone one. I think I mentioned that you wouldn't know it at the fire alarm panel, but I don't think I really explained in, in, in much detail um, when that really comes into play. But I did give the nursing home example. So imagine you had 10 smoke detectors on a circuit, and they were all individual rooms inside a nursing home. And I think I said sometimes on a smoke detector, or sometimes in that application, the smoke detector would be used to, when the smoke detector goes into alarm, it would short out so it would short out the zone so it would put the zone in alarm and then oftentimes it will close the door to that room which is held open either by a magnetic door holder or sometimes a, a closer that is powered up and when it loses power it'll physically pull the door shut and then it'll turn on a, a firelight outside of the room to uh, let the nurses know that that room is in alarm uh, so we're gonna th those are always or they should be by code. They should always be a four-wire detector when they have that when they have that relay. So uh, if they're if they're performing a life safety function like a door closer, it should be a four-wire smoke detector. So we're going to redraw the four-wire smoke detector, which will serve as a pretty decent review, hopefully, of how to wire it up. And then we're going to introduce the relay portion of it. So let's start with with drawing. Let's start with wiring up this smoke detector. So you can see we have power and the zone. This yellow switch on the left which is the same we had last time, and I added this relay on the right. So we'll ignore the relay for right now, but hopefully by this point we're fairly comfortable with how relays work. Anyhow, so we have resettable power from the panel, which we talked about last time, and that, of course, is going to go to our power circuit. And once this smoke detector has power, right now it has power, it's going to have 24 volts, well now it's going to work. If I were to spray smoke, it would short out the yellow switch on the left, so that the terminals on the left and the terminals just to the right of that are, you know, are, are, are shorted together. Um, and then it would make this onboard relay change states. So common normally closed would go to common normally open. That, that switch, this, this little armature right there, hopefully you can tell that's the armature, that would change states and go over to normally closed. Okay, so now we'll wire up our zone. Okay, so we got positive going to the left side of that common and normally open zone circuit and negative going to the right side of it. So if you remember, the reason that we use this power supervision relay on the top of the screen is because we need to supervise both the zone and the power. So if we had cut a power wire, we need to know it. So the way to do that is to take power out of the smoke detector and into this relay and usually it's a wire knotted, depending on the type of relay, they make different kinds. So we take negative, and now we'll take positive, and wire it up to that power supervision relay. And as we talked about in the last video, once we do that, this open switch up here is now going to close. So if we had metered, before if we had metered the two purple wires, metered the resistance, we would have had an open, because that switch was open. Well now, now that it has power, that switch is going to close. So now if we had metered it, this would be, this is a continuous loop. This is like a dead short. So just think of it as one complete wire. And that's why the manufacturers made it one solid color, just to kind of give you, to kind of help, um, I guess, help make that obvious. And so now that we have this complete loop, which will open when we lose power, now we just need to find a way to, to run basically one continuous wire with our resistor somewhere in that circuit. So just like we did in the last video, we're going to come positive out of here 
And you could do this either way. You could put the resistor here. It doesn't really matter because all this is is basically one extended wire. So where, wherever you put the resistor doesn't really matter. But last time we put it here, so for consistency, we'll, we'll do the same thing. So I stopped this wire here, and now I'm going to wire nut in a resistor. And then wire nut the resistor to that other purple wire. So that part's complete. This is as far as we got with our, our four-wire smoke detector in the last video. If I were to cut any one of these wires, the relay would open up. Um, well, if I were to cut the power wire, the relay would open up and I'd get a trouble because the panel wouldn't see the resistor. It would still power the smoke detector, and that's an important thing to point out. I didn't do a good job of pointing that out in the last video because I said no current would flow when you open up this switch if you were to lose power, if you were to lose power, say, up here. But assuming that the smoke detector still had power and the zone was still going at least to the smoke detector, at least to right here, um, if you were to spray smoke, it would still put it in alarm. So if you lost, if you had an uh, circuit, this resistor came loose or something, or if this power supervision relay failed, the smoke detector would still work because it has power to this point, and the zone is still intact at this point. So once it shorts out, it would still work. But anyway, so let's move on and let's look at this relay now. If if the, if any of this was confusing, I recommend going back and watching the last video, or maybe even rewinding this video to the beginning and, and seeing that wiring again. But so before I mentioned. Um, the door closer and the firelight. So I'm going to bring that into the picture right now. Imagine this being a fire door in a patient room in a nursing home. And there, you could really be any application you want. And then outside of it, we'll imagine this is a firelight. This isn't a very good firelight, but um, it is what it is. So this was usually this would usually be located right outside the door um, in the hallway, so the nurses could see it. And now the only other thing we would need is another power supply, right? Because a relay is not going to give us any power. So, so now we have these these three things. These we have a power supply, we have a firelight, and we have a door closer. So if I had wired up 24 volts, we, we're assuming that this firelight is 24 volts, and its magnetic door closer or door holder in this situation is 24 volts. If I had wired up power directly to the firelight, it would come on. Similarly, if I had wired up power directly to the door closer. It would come on um, but we don't want the firelight on at all times right we, we want um, we only want it to light up if there's a fire we do want the door closer held open at all times so the way we do this is is kind of cool so let's let me move this a little farther away we'll move the door closer oops uh, what did I just do redo that We'll move this down. Okay, so let's wire let's let's wire this up. So so if we're using the relay, we want to always have power at the door closer or the door holder, and we only want power and we want it to drop out an alarm, and we only want power on this firelight when the smoke detector goes into alarm, and we're using the same power source. So what we can do is we can take two wires right off this common. We can take uh, right off, yeah, right off the right off the uh, negative leg of the power supply. So, hold on, I'm not in the right tool. So if we come off a negative, we can take one wire right to the firelight, and we can go out, or we can take another wire right off of here to the door closer. So that doesn't really do anything, right? We, you know, it's just one leg of the circuit. That's not going to do anything. So now we take our positive leg. And we're going to go to common, and it's important here that we go to common, and you'll see why in a minute. So from common, I'm going to change colors here. For, for, from common, we're going to take this normally closed um, contact. We're going to hook a wire up from normally closed up to positive. So right now, if you follow this, you've got negative going to the door closer, and you've got positive going through the common, through the armature, back out normally closed. So this has power. The door should be held open right now. And on the normally open circuit, let's see what color should I use. We'll use orange. On the normally open circuit, I'm going to take this and go right to the firelight. So now your screen looks like a complete mess. We've just got a bunch of wires going everywhere, but I'm kind of limited on space, so I had, I, you know, I did the best I can. But if you follow it one at a time, it's fairly easy. Oops. Um, 
like I, we just we just follow the door closer that's complete right now right so that has power the door is open the the firelight is not on right now because this common is not completing that circuit we've got 24 volts basically we've got the positive side of 24 volts sitting at this common switch so whichever way this switch goes that's which way the voltage is going that's which that's the way the voltage is going to go so let's assume we, we spray smoke in this device so there's a fire in that room and it goes into alarm what's going to happen well we know our zone's going to short out right the smoke detector is an alarm so the zone's, the zone's going to short out and it's going to put the fire panel in alarm so then your horns would go off or you know whatever functions you have tied to the panel if you have fire doors like we talked about before those would close but those would close in the hallway usually those are like the main common areas are tied to just to the general alarm so they'll close on any alarm but in most cases the patient rooms will only close when that smoke detector in the room goes off so again this is the smoke detector in the patient room so now this relay is going to change states on the smoke detector because it's an alarm right so that that armature is going to go from normally closed to normally open so now this has continuity and our fire door is going to close because there's no longer 24 volts on this purple wire up here but our firelight is going to come on because now that 24 volts which we took to common right here it's going to common right that's now coming out onto normally open and it's turning our firelight on it already had the negative sitting there so now our firelight is on and there's 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 one thing I kind of want to mention that's my way of showing that the firelight's on. It's kind of dorky. Um, but there's one thing I want to mention um, about the firelight, and it, this is not supervised. The, the fire door basically is because if you were to cut a wire, um, the door is going to close. It needs 24 volts to stay open. If you were to cut a wire, if something if something were to fail, it would, it would shut. So you'd know that there was a problem. With the firelight, if you were to take a... Um, wire off or if you know were to come loose on the smoke detector whatever the case may be you're not going to know it it is not supervised why is it not supervised I don't know I don't know if it's it's just not a code requirement or what but this is typically the way you see this done if it were required that that be supervised you'd have to do things a little bit differently there are ways you could do it but we're not going to get into that now um, we just want to kind of see I uh, just wanted to kind of show you how, once again, how this four-wire smoke detector works and how you could use onboard relays if you're sharing a power, if you're sharing the same power supply, you know, how you could use just one onboard relay to perform these two functions. And this is pretty common. You see this quite a bit in nursing homes, probably some other applications too, but I, I can't think of any right now. Uh, but my video has gone longer than I typically like it to. Um, Hopefully this is fairly clear. If not, I'd suggest you rewind it and, uh, and watch it again. And if you have any questions, I haven't mentioned this before, but if you have any questions on any of the videos, feel free to leave a comment um, under that video on YouTube, and I'll see it and I'll respond to it. Um, or any, any you know, comments or questions or suggestions. If I, you know, I did something that doesn't make sense or that needs to be fixed, let me know. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.